How many people still use a DVD player? Like, really? Like a DVD player? Like a like laptop? A real, no, like no. a DVD player. Like, no. you sit down, because you've got a flat screen TV in your house now. Yeah. And do you have a DVD player or a Blu ray player plugged into it? My parents do. Do they? Yeah. Do you? At my house in Windsor? No. No, you no. just use a laptop and that's yeah. it. Do you have a DVD player in that and you use that have, for yeah, physical discs? Yeah, I have that. So you I've throw got, those in and Yeah, cuz I've got Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and all that fun stuff. And you're not tired of them yet. I so mean, that's it. She's got They're a little annoying, I will admit. <laughs> <laughs> just don't drive your Tesla while watching Harry Potter. I won't, I promise. <laughs> I, I I quite often come into stacks of great bargain DVDs and things and and uh the fact is I don't I don't have a DVD player hooked up. Yeah. My wife told me to be honest and say, Robbie, you do have a DVD player. You do own one. You just haven't bothered to hook it up. <laughs> and to that I say, no, dear. I just don't feel like we need it anymore because it's just clutter. And like this is one, two, three, four, five, six movies. And it takes up that much room on a shelf. Yeah, okay? It's Ridiculous. Well, the bottom one is four movies in it. Oh, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> Tremors 1 through 4. Okay? So we're talking the best of the best right there. Uh, yeah, no, to be fair, sure. But realistically, that's how much space it takes up on a shelf or yeah. whatever. So what I do is I, I copy these into a computer uh, that um, has Plex. Okay. And you've, we've talked about Plex Media Server on our show before. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, get onto our website, category5.tv. Type in Plex in the search. What it allows me to do is it allows me to take this whole stack of DVDs and put them onto the hard drive of that system and then watch it from any of my devices. Oh. So I've got a Roku on my TV downstairs. It's a 55-inch flat screen, and it's great. Yeah. And then uh, we've got a, a smaller flat screen TV with an um, Amazon Fire, uh, Fire TV stick okay. upstairs. So I've got Plex on both of those devices, uh, plus we have Plex on the computers. Yeah. So um, that allows us to then watch our movies without having to physically physically take the DVDs out and put them into various devices and have DVD players all over the house because you imagine if you've got two or three TVs, yeah. that's two or three DVD players or Blu-ray players in order to watch your movies. Yeah. I also have three kids at home and they're all under 12 years old. One of them is, is six years old and to have stacks and stacks of DVDs, you know they're going to get ruined. They're going to get wrecked. So I copy them in and then I box them and I stick them in storage in the garage. Yeah. Right? Because we're not talking about copying DVDs to bootleg. I'm not, I'm not making copies and, and giving them to friends or selling them or anything like that. What we're talking about is taking DVDs that we legitimately own and having a way to be able to put those onto our devices. Because quite frankly, I don't have many devices anymore that take this. Yeah. Realistically. And if I do, I've, I, do have, I do own one DVD player, but it's not hooked up because yeah. it just takes up, it takes up this much space on our media center. Mm. Well, I've got the TV on the wall and on the media center, I've got 5.1 surround sound speakers and a couple of other little devices. I don't need to have yet another huge <laughs> device sitting there, right? Yes. Like, let's just throw VHS into the mix. I have a question for you while sure. we're going through this. Yeah. Does this, uh, does this server, does it also take Blu-ray Blu discs? Yeah, sure. Like Plex? Yeah. Plex will just take any file that you throw okay. at it. So the trick is converting these into files that can be played back. Right. So and you don't need to have Plex. If you've got a decent size hard drive in your computer, you could, um, with you being at school, for example, you don't want to have a thousand DVDs, yeah. but you could copy a thousand DVDs onto your hard drive. Right. For example, just to say. So, so then, you know, if you own the discs, you can have them on your computer and they're yours and you can watch them on demand just by double clicking on the file. It's yeah. a video file, yeah. right? P what Plex does is it gives you basically your own homebrew Netflix style service so that you can actually watch all of your programs, all of your movies in one centralized system on any of your devices. Okay. And it keeps track. So if I finish half of Sherlock Holmes, just like Netflix, it will carry on from where I left off the oh, next time okay. I push play. And if, I've, if I'm ripping um, seasons of shows, uh, another example would be, um, and here's a great example. We do have a DVD player, but we buy a lot of British shows right. on DVD. Yeah. Okay? Because you can't get them here. So, for example, uh, my wife opened up season five of Stella um, as part of our Christmas morning. So, so we've got Stella season five. It is from Sky One and it's, it's um, 
region coded to the UK. Right. So if I put it in my DVD player here in Canada, it would not play. Oh. So the other advantage to what we're doing is I'm able to buy from Amazon.co.uk, get the disc in the mail, and then convert it to files that can be played here in Canada. A disc that I would not even be able to play if I plugged it into my DVD player. Yeah. Okay. It starts with knowing what kind of software. When you ask about Blu-ray, Blu-ray yeah. is a bit of a different can of worms. And okay. that's because the encryption on Blu-ray has gotten better. Right. Now, there is software available that will do it, and there's ways to do it, but it's, it's beyond the scope of what we're teaching you tonight. Okay. So we're looking specifically at DVDs, and that's because DVDs, I can show you that in a half hour or less. It's really, really simple, and you can do it at home. And you do not need to be a tech-savvy wizard in order to... You don't need to do a bunch of compiling and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to start with DVDs. I've got my trusty little laptop here, and uh, it has Microsoft Windows 10 on it. And so the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a program called Handbrake. And we're going to find that just on the web. Uh, just bring up Chrome or whatever browser you're using and go handbrake.fr. And that's the official website of this tool. What Handbrake is, is it is a uh, piece of software that is designed to uh, convert videos from one format to another. Right. So that could be uh, a file to another version of a file. So okay. if you want to be able to play it on your PSP or something like that, or yeah. it will convert it to a file format that's compatible. Okay. Uh, but similarly, we can set the source to a DVD and it will copy that into a file that we tell it to, you know, what format we want, like an MP4. The, where, where Handbrake falls short, if you will, we'll say, is that it has to be an unencrypted, non-copyright um, protected disc. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're talking re realistically. The only things that you can copy with that out of the box are like your home movies that have been burnt to DVD. Right. Things like that. Or you know, what can you really get that's not copy protected? Again, I reiterate that we're not showing you how to hack disks and we're not looking at piracy tonight. That's not what we're doing. Um, what we're looking at is making a copy of our own legitimately owned disks so that we can put them on our other devices, so that we can view them on the devices that we own because we may not have DVD players laying around the house right. uh, and connected to every TV. So that's what we want to do. So Handbrake, as I say, is not going to, uh, out of the box, rip um, these um, Hollywood DVDs. But... I'm going to show you how to get ar how to get around that, if you will. Uh, but basically, okay, I'm going to download the Windows version, so I'm just going to save that download, and it's pretty small. It's going to be here really, really quickly. Why Handbrake does not do this out of the box is because it's open source, it's free, it's available for you to download on Windows, Mac, and Linux. You'll notice I'm doing this on Windows because a large uh, number of people are, are on the Windows platform, so I want you to see how this is done on Windows. Um, if you're on Linux, if you're on Mac, you can get it for that, those platforms as well, and the process is pretty much identical, other than the fact we're not going to use DLLs, as you're going to see in a few minutes with Windows. Um, but the reason that they don't include the capability to rip copyright protected discs is because one, they don't want it used for piracy. Yeah. Um, but also they're, they're kind of covering their butts a little bit because as soon as they bring out a tool that will do that out of the box, now they are creating a, a tool that could be used for piracy. And, yeah, which you know, makes sense. Like I yeah. wouldn't want my equipment being used for something. For nefarious. sure. And when you're creating a legitimate application uh, with legitimate use, um, they just it, it's like a gray area. We don't want to go there, so we're just going to play it safe, and the tools are available out there. You just need to know how to get them. Yeah. That's what I'm going to show you how to do uh, for all legitimate intents and purposes. Okay, so I've got Handbrake downloaded here, uh, and I can click on that, and I'll run it. And it's going to ask me to install version 1. Look at that. Brand new, nice and sleek. And there we go. Okay, Handbrake has been installed on your computer, so it should be on my desktop now. There it is. Pretty sleek. Straightforward. What do you want to do? Source selection. Okay. So it is just kind of waiting for me to select something. I don't have a DVD in there right now, so it's not going to do anything. Um, should I throw a DVD in? And we'll show you what happens. Let's, let's start with Sherlock Holmes here. So here's just a... Is it? Okay. I haven't seen it yet, so oh, I'm looking forward to putting movie. it on Plex and, and uh, getting in. I may have seen it years ago when it came... Like, it's yeah. an old, oldie but a goodie, right? Oh, absolutely. But uh, we enjoy the, the show uh, out of the UK, for sure, the current one. Very excited for the new season. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I've just stuck in that DVD here, and we'll see that uh, that's going to... There's Windows saying that they've detected it. 
Uh, let's open Handbrake, and it should see that DVD now. There it is. So Sherlock Holmes is now one of my options for source selection. So I click on that. And what it does is it scans all the titles on the disc. So if it's able to read it, it will see the titles. Um, those are basically like the chapter marks and everything. And basically we want to record the entire video to a file. So every title uh, from, the, from the DVD. There are uh, sometimes like the Tremors one, for example, that you pointed out that has all four um, Tremors. Uh, we may want to select just one video because right. we don't want to rip them all to one uh, one straight uh, straight video, right? Okay, so this is saying that there is uh, there's a problem. There is no format of that disc that uh, Handbrake can actually read. Um, so what's going on? Well, the source may be protected or include DRM. Please note that Handbrake does not support the removal of copy protection. So out of the box you might say okay well this is not going to work and that's free software and it's not going to do it for me uh what we can do is we can tap into what vlc has done at videoland.org let's head on over there and videolan uh, vlc is a very popular video player because it basically plays every format right you've right. probably got it installed on windows yeah. you m maybe have it on your linux machine even your mac uh, because it'll just play everything you don't have to mess around and again it's not about breaking copy protection it's about being able to access the things that you legitimately own and use them on all your devices and that's that's a legitimate use right. um, so hopping over here on the VLC website notice I'm not going to download VLC although I would recommend that you do that uh, it's a great player and uh, handbrake will actually tap into some of its features but instead what we're going to do is we're going to go projects and then lib DVD CSS and what this is as it says here it's a simple library designed for accessing DVDs like a block device without having to bother with the decryption so it basically circumvents the fact that there is copy protection on that uh, on that disk so if you scroll down a little bit it's not very clear on Windows where you're supposed to go because these are all instructions for Linux machines uh, but if we click on releases here uh, then we'll see a list of all the various releases and as you click on to the newer releases you'll see that there are source packages here for Linux and so we click uh, you know I would start at the most recent and work your way backwards I happen to know that it's uh, I believe 1.2.12 is the last build of uh, Windows. If you go to .13, you'll see it goes right to Linux sources. Uh, if we go into 1.2.12, at least at this time here in 2016, the end of 2016, that's the most recent version of the Windows compiled binary uh, that is available. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us access to uh, the abilities, the capabilities of ripping encrypted copy protected disks. Right. Okay. So we're going to go into, now I have Windows 64 bit. All right. How do we tell that? Click on your start menu. Uh, now I've got, uh, I've got classic shell installed, so I'm going to have to hold the shift button in order to get there, but you can just go there. Uh, right click on file explorer and go properties. And you'll see Windows system type 64-bit operating system. Okay. okay. So I know that I have a 64-bit. It will be either 64 or 32. So I go into the Win64 folder, and you'll see that there is a libdvd css 2dll I'm going to save that. Um, first of all, I'll throw it into my downloads folder. That's fine. It's pretty much instantaneous because it's a tiny little file. Cut that file. We're going to use that, and we're going to jump into our C drive. We're going to head on over to uh, program files on our 64-bit system. Uh, and I should see Handbrake there. Yep, there it is. And simply in the home folder, the root folder of Handbrake, I'm going to paste that file in, give it permission to write. And now Handbrake has DVD decryption. Okay, so if all went well with the versioning here, open up Handbrake and select our source again. Now they've just released version 1.0, so I'm hoping that this uh, is going to take just like that. Let's see what happens. So it's going through the titles just like it did last time. You notice I didn't go through any installation steps for that. It was just, hey, just pop it in, drop it in the folder. Older versions of uh, Handbrake will, now you notice I didn't get the error message there. You see that? Yeah. So, so that's great. So it, it took. Woo. So here are our different uh, titles. And you'll see this one is 11 seconds. That one's 12 seconds, 21 seconds, 30 seconds, 14 minutes. Etc. The first one here is two hours and eight minutes. That's going to be the full movie. Okay. So now I'm going to browse, and what am I doing here? I'm just telling it, hey, this is where I want to save 
the file too. So I'm gonna just call this Sherlock Holmes. How do you spell it? Oh, Holmes. 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 And we're gonna call it .mp4. You can do .m4v. Hit save. Okay. And then choose the type of video rip that you want to do. Okay, now it's automatically set to fast 1080p 30. Now this is a DVD, so I know that it's only going to be 720 by 480. So there's no point in doing a 1080p file because that's more, it's going to take up a lot more space than it needs to. You right. only have 480p data on a DVD, yeah. which is still going to look really good. Uh, but we know that 1080p is not an appropriate format. So we can say, what, very fast 480p 30? Right. Or we can say Super HQ, which is high quality, 480p 30. So 30 frames per second. That one also says surround. I like that. And it has surround sound. Uh, I'm not sure if I want the surround sound embedded, but it's, it's going to likely work anyways. Uh, but you can play around with selecting. These are the presets that come with the application. And you can, uh, you can simply click on any one of those to set it to that. So let's say, just for the sake of our show, we're going to say very fast 480p30 because when we come back from the news, we want this thing to be ready so that we can actually give it a test. And you'll see that uh, that has given us a width of 720 by 480 and we've got everything kind of set. You can f go through here and see what the settings are for the um, for this filter you notice it's going to automatically decomb the video so that gets rid of the interlacing that happens on a dvd makes it look real nice it's constant quality and uh, it's going to be uh, very good quality there um, don't put it up too high because this can just be unreasonably slow and there's no point in it and everything looks good um great so it's going to rip everything. So now we can either start and code, or if we're doing a chapter thing like, like I would with uh, one of my BBC discs or Sky One discs from the UK, I could add to queue and then continue. You can click on preview, and it's going to create a nice little preview for you so that you can see what is this going to look like um, right off the DVD. You can see that it's obviously decoding it just fine. Everything looks great. And I can start that. So let's go. Give it a start. Let's take a look at our queue. Show queue, there it is. It's taking chapters 1 to 31 and it's saving to SherlockHolmes.mp4. So I'm going to let that go. We're going to let that uh, rip to the, to the desktop of the computer. And uh, when we come back from the news, it should be, you know, if all goes well, it's going to be all ready for us and we'll have a file that we can import into Plex or we can watch directly on our uh, laptop computer. Okay, so bringing back up my Windows machine here, um, you can see it's still encoding past one of one. It's about 50% done. So it's not going to be done during the course of the show. There's about 16 minutes left um, to the encode itself. But we saw in the preview there that it was, in fact, working just fine. And since installing the uh, LibDVD CS, uh, CSS uh, DLL file on our Windows machine, as easy as that was to do, it gave Handbrake the capability of decrypting um, those DVDs. So these are commercial DVDs that we're able to now decrypt and add to our devices as a file. So yeah. that's where Plex comes in and you can start building up your library from DVDs that you legitimately own and uh, and then you're not downloading illegal things and stuff like that. Yeah. I'd rather see you be, uh, you know, Im import your own uh, movie library and uh, set that all up and then uh, and then you've got that all available on all your devices. I love that. I love that things are so connected with Plex. It's a really great piece of software. 